Hello Internet, welcome back to another Japanese language learning log number eight. Today we're going to be talking about the long term. Now, I don't have my portable charger on me, so you're going to be dealing with that shadow and I'm very sorry. It is currently 1140, so I'm going to keep it a little quiet tonight. Uh, I'm just in the right mindset to record for some reason. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark and I've been studying Japanese for about three months now, three and a half months. And over the summer, I did a learning log every two weeks. And now it's every month, the second Saturday of every month. And so last one was two weeks ago, the next one will be four weeks from now. So yeah, I didn't have very concrete goals last time. Wow, that shadow's annoying. But I'll be defining some more concrete goals for next month at the end of this video. And with this little script here, I wrote out all my thoughts. I I'm, I'm giving up keeping these things between 12 and 15 minutes. Now that my schedule is a little more settled, I had to cut out some art blocks, but Japanese is sticking around. I'll do art on the weekends. Section one of the video is methodology. What have I been doing? Uh, pretty much been doing one economy about two or three times a day whenever, whenever reviews open up. I fell a little behind on this level, so I don't know if I'll meet my goal, which I'll get to later, but I just sit down and I'm just like, oh, let me check one Hikani. And it's it's super satisfying to do. In just a minute, I'll skip to what my average learning session looks like because it also includes uh, Boom Pro, which is great. And I'll, I'll talk again about that a little later when I get to some reflections on what I've been doing. Uh, I've been listening to Japanese music pretty much all the time. Total vibe. Uh, Spotify is starting to recommend me different artists, uh, which is really cool. And I uh, mentioned this in the last learning log, but I'm, I'm men seeing song titles and hearing words, futatsu, hitotsu. It's really cool uh, just being like, oh, hey, I know that word. And hearing like anato wa and be like, oh, you know, whatever comes after that should be something that focuses on you with the topic. Anyway, <laughs> I haven't actually watched any TV, uh, anime, but uh, TV in general, really, the last two weeks, which is for me good, but uh, I need to watch more anime and more Japanese stuff. All in all, I am playing the long game and I love it. Uh, I have some blocks and I have successfully sat down, uh, time blocks, I have successfully sat down to do these things. Monday is an hour, Tuesday is an hour and a half, Wednesday is an hour, Thursday is an hour and a half, Friday is an hour and a half of like concrete Japanese learning. And I haven't filled up all of these because there are times when I say, okay, I'll move Japanese earlier or I'll cut off half an hour to be flexible with the chaos that is my schedule. I'm working a lot of tutoring hours, but I have successfully made Japanese a priority uh, and some uh, priorities and motivation, something I talk more about in this video here, which popped off. So thank you for the support on that. And I'm really happy with it, honestly. Just strategies for learning things on your own. And don't forget to hydrate and drink some water. So let's really quickly jump into a, I guess, average learning session. I'm gonna try and cut it down to like two minutes. I'm just gonna go over Wani Kani and how it works. And then Boon Pro and Grammar. And then some research papers, which is something I wanna, wanna do. Okay, so this is Wani Kani. Uh, this is one of the two things I've been doing, essentially. You know, you can look up Wani Kani and how they do things on your own, but effectively, I have 54 things to review. These are the things, uh, 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. You can't see my cursor, I remember. These are the things that are coming up. So, for example, the things that I have down really well probably won't show up for another week, like these 27. Let's go ahead and do reviews. Last time was three. I usually get around 70%, which clearly isn't optimal or anything. Also, I'm still in the free version of Wani Kani, so I don't feel bad showing much of this, but it's good. It's, you know, the, the whole idea. I'm gonna worry about that later. The whole idea is long-term learning for this learning log. So effectively you're you're given different kanji. So this kanji means dog, and I know it's pronounced inu, so I hit enter. Uh, this is white or haku, but uh, that's the kanji for it, I think. But the vocab reading is different. It's shiro. No, shi, oro. Oh, and they have some, some really cool mnemonic. So literally, uh, yeah, the sound is sets. Um, you just go through like this. <laughs> when you get it wrong, as I did, yeah, I used I used above, not below. I'm just dumb. Okay, so one thing that I mentioned in the last learning log, so this is a radical, something you'll see in many, uh, I guess, kanji. It means arrow, hopefully. <laughs> but the problem is I, I believe there is a kanji that is year that has this top left corner thing. And the problem is my, mnemonics often conflict with Wani Kani's, so sometimes it throws me off. But, uh, you know, it, it works out in the end. Alright, 
Cool, so this was much better than usual, 85%. Now I'm hoping, because I have gotten these radicals to 100%, I'm hoping there are more lessons. Um, so from what I understand, when you unlock the radicals, which in theory are the building blocks of the kanji, then you learn more kanji. Makes sense, right? Uh, and as you learn more kanji, you learn more vocabulary. So that's kind of the idea behind this long-term thing, right? And I'll talk more about uh, the observations I've made about these very niche specific websites for these languages offer more. And Boon Pro is another great example of this. Now this isn't a review or anything, but what I do on Boon Pro is the first thing is I go to the grammar. Um, I look at all of them and I look at the end five and I just kind of, I do like three to five at a time. And then you just, you add it onto your review. And so if I go to review 40, what I like about this is <clears throat> it doesn't categorize things. So it's not like, okay, we're going to review the negation stuff now. It's all one thing. So you don't get in the habit of memorizing things too much. Ki, I know this kanji from the N5 thing. So this is Kiku and it's going to be looking for, because it's an U ending Ki, Ki des, Kikimas. Anyway. That's what I do with Boom Pro, and I'm gonna come back to that later because I've got archery in a bit. Then, as I'll get into in this, later in this video, I wanna go through more papers of this stuff because this stuff sounds very fascinating to me. Anaphor Chibun, interesting. And anaphor is, uh, I believe a reflexive is an anaphor, so like myself or herself. So things that compare Japanese and English, I think will be cool. And then here's one that, I, again, I literally just came across this, but it talks about, I guess, pitch accent in a sense and its effect on so downstep is this going down, I believe, um, and it's relation to syntax. So this is just the stuff I'm curious about, right? Uh, note to future Mark, please blur my email in the tabs. But yeah, so that's what I've been doing and that is what I will hope to do. So back to learning logs main body. <laughs> All right, so hope you enjoyed that. Um, it was like a 12 minute recording, but I'm gonna try and cut it down to the best of my ability. Some reflections. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this kind of uh, format for these learning logs, but uh, I thought it would be cool to keep up this part of the learning log where I look back on the week and, you know, what have I noticed? Uh, and the third learning log, I believe, is when I started to see kanji and different Japanese characters as what they were, uh, you know, characters and recognizing radicals, being able to tell hiragana from katakana from kanji, and they weren't just scribbles on, on paper, right? And so these are some more of those reflections and they're purely subjective. They're just the things that tell me that, hey, you know, maybe I am making progress. Uh, the first thing is that I went to sign up for the JLPT N5 in December. No more seats left. That's unfortunate. I would love to apply for the JET program, but you know, maybe I still will. We'll see. Another reflection, and this one I was like, oh yeah, I was really excited about. Uh, I finished the series called Anohana, and there was at one point a character said, Menma wa Jin Dan Daisuki. And I knew what that meant. Menma wa, wa being the top, uh, indicating Menma is the topic of the sentence, Jintan being the subject, Daisuki, which means, to, I guess, to love something or someone. I was able to understand it without really thinking it through and being like, okay, well, Menma, translating it to English in my head and then understanding it. And I was able to break it down, which felt really good. Resources like Wadi Kani and Boon Pro, I have noticed that they are very tailored to Japanese, which is on purpose, but this lets them do something that things like Duolingo and Rosetta Stone don't let them, uh, aren't allowed to do really because they generalize so much. You know, I wasn't able to find these types of resources for Russian when I did that, and I'm sure they're out there somewhere, but this resource for learning kanji, getting over this daunting task of learning thousands, you know, 2000 kanji, Wani Kani does the hard work for you. It, it gives you the order, tells you when to show up, and that's all you have to do, just show up. Uh, and Boon Pro specifically is great because because what I notice is that, very unlike Duolingo, it doesn't have you translate it. It doesn't say, here's an English sentence, translate it. It says, you know, make this into the polite form. There is translation, there is the use of English, inevitably, but it has you fill things in. So it gives you part of the sentence, and, you know, this is good, and you have to put in the part that means good, but the parts I really appreciate are, you know, make this the formal whatever. Now, grammar isn't everything, obviously, but you know, I think that is learning these patterns of language, generative grammar in its in its larger sense, is important. Uh, you know, whether you agree with generative grammar itself or not, the the idea that pattern is structured, has some sort of structure, has patterns, I think is super important to learn as adults. Uh, and it's part of my linguistic studies that really helped me. Wani Kani and Boom Pro are very unique resources, and it's because they can they're so niche that they go can go in depth. As a jack of all trades, I do many things, and so I have a lot of surface level knowledge. 
I'm not good at many things. You know, my interest in linguistics goes deep, but you know, I'm an average CS guy. I have like moderate blunder skills. And so it's, it's kind of like Duolingo and Rosetta Stone are all surface level tools, right? Because they do so many languages, but Wanikani and BoomPro, they can really dig into Japanese because that's all they're meant to do. Sort of a digression, but you know, if you're staying wide, you'll have a lot of shallow knowledge. If you focus on one thing, you'll go deep. That's just something I like to think about a lot. And lastly, this occurred to me while I was walking around the other day, so I'm gonna pretty much read this verbatim. My approach to Japanese has been wildly different than my approach to Brazilian, Portuguese, Danish, and Russian. Now, these three languages, quick preface, I'm not nearly fluent in. Uh, Danish was solely a 90 day, 100 day Duolingo streak that I had. Brazilian Portuguese, I was curious about the sound inventory, so I started learning a little bit. Russian was a more serious endeavor, but I didn't have a strong incentive. Uh, I was pretty much trying to impress someone, but that fell through for obvious reasons. And I was also fascinated by Russian grammar, but anyway, Japanese has really stuck through and my approach to it, I think has, has, has been approached, what? My approach to it has been as it has been because of these three failed endeavors. Now I still want to return to all of these languages. You know, I want to maybe be like 30 in you know, 10 years, speak four or five languages, uh, at least at a very basic level. Some are easier to adapt to than others. That's a whole other thing. But anyway, I'm learning vocabulary. So Japanese vocabulary, grammar and phonology all at the same time, but not necessarily in a linear order. So Wani Kani is teaching me grammar. I'm no, vocabulary. Uh, Boonpro is more or less my grammar thing. And phonology is more or less listening to songs and podcasts and TV shows attentively. Um, I was just talking to someone tonight. The word orange in, you know, in Japanese, or pronounced the Japanese accent would be oronju. Maybe, maybe. Oronji. It sounds different is my point. You know, in my high school French class, there was a difference between the kids who tried to speak French and the kids who just didn't try with the accent at all. Bonjour, je m'appelle Marc. Je voudrais une baguette or je m'appelle Marc, uh, je voudrais une baguette. You know, my accent's not perfect, but I think putting in the effort to make the sounds helps you hear it. I, well, I'm really digressing. <laughs> in other words, I'm not learning specific grammar and seeing it in 20 example sentences before I move on. I'm not nailing negation. I'm just, just going through arguably too many Boon Pro examples all at one time. Uh, and I'm learning these various concepts and I realize that I'm identifying them more easily in shows, readings, and listening. And learning Japanese in this way, and this is my main thing here, has been like assembling a puzzle from various different points. If you think of a normal jigsaw puzzle and you assemble it from one corner, you're gonna, you know, eventually get there, but you build out from one point. Everything is a foundation on the one point. But what if you, you know, and a lot of people actually do this, I think, you start matching pieces in different chunks. And that's kind of what's happening. You know, I've got Wani Kani putting together the, the vocabulary section, Boon Pro putting together the, the grammar section, the sound inventory and TV shows putting together this, this sound stuff. And they're all meeting in certain ways. I'm putting the other pieces here, pieces there, whatever pieces over there. And sometimes they connect and it's been super enlightening to learn a language this way. And I'm absolutely loving it because the process is not linear. Sorry, I've been I've speak, spoken a lot today apparently, and oh, of course I spill water on my shirt. Great job, Mark. It's been a great way of learning a language in a non-linear fashion because it always keeps it interesting. Uh, I, I've just really been enjoying it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to how reading about Japanese semantics and syntax will further this puzzle solving. And speaking of, let's jump into the goals. Um, ah, man, I'm sorry, future Mark. I, I just know when I'm editing this, I'm gonna be mad at myself. <laughs> um, so leaning into this puzzle concept, which I wanna use as a metaphor throughout my learning jersey journey, uh, as long as it applies, my goal for next month is to collect a few papers on Japanese, as I showed in that clip earlier, uh, on Japanese syntax and semantics. Syntax, uh, for those who don't know, is effectively the structure of uh, uh, of language. What defines you know a noun phrase following a verb phrase, a verb phrase following a noun phrase, grammatical analysis, and then semantics is kind of the meaning of language. Um, so if I say one thing, you know, what do I mean by it? What will you interpret it to be? Uh, am I giving you enough information? Whatever. And I'm taking a graduate level semantics course right now. Hopefully, I'll be able to use this material and potentially the experience. Uh, of this learning endeavor in a paper that's due at the end of the term. My interest, and this might just be jargon, is in the semantic variation of abstract concepts 
for adult language acquisition. Don't know if I'll really do something with this idea one day, but I want to simply start on the stuff that my inner linguist is intrigued by. Next thing is that I'm sort of abandoning my proof of hypothesis theory because it's clear to me that while learning linguistics concepts is helpful, if you don't know what my hypothesis is, check out my first language learning log. Uh, you don't really need to go far into linguistic concepts to learn a language as an adult. It makes it easier. I'm not gonna lie. And people aren't wrong when they say that kids are better at learning languages, but you gotta keep reading. You can't stop reading. It's not impossible as an adult. It's been three and a half months and I can understand basic sentences and put together basic sentences in Japanese. And that's not, I'm the epitome of average. You know, that's, that's not some special skill. I would simply credit that to being able to recognize patterns because of my linguistic studies, um, properly immersing myself. In other words, I'm watching TV, but also mindfully paying attention to things that are said. But yeah, you, you know, anyway, back on topic, you don't need to go too far into learning the grammar of things, but learning that language has a structure, learning that there are things for adjectives and verbs and nouns and whatever is incredibly helpful. Grammar rules themselves, sure, you need to do them at one point. You can apply them as you learn through immersion learning, you know, if you need to learn how to make a sound that English doesn't have, or your native language, I should say, doesn't have. Anyway, I have a whole learning log on phonology. <laughs> My new goal with this series is just to point people to something and say that it's not impossible. And honestly, it's not hard to learn a language as long as you put in the commitment. Now, if people say they don't have the time to learn a language. I hate when I say I don't have time to do something because in my case, that usually means I have, I won't make the time for something. You know, I don't wanna give something else up for it. And right now I spend an hour and a half aiming for two hours a day on Japanese. You know, some of these days has been half an hour. Sure, I haven't made the whole hour, but my goal is to meet the whole hour, hour and a half. That doesn't include watching anime or music or whatever. And it's a big commitment I'm making. And I just, I wish, and this isn't just language learning, this is maybe just a rant that I wouldn't normally say if it wasn't almost midnight. I wish that people would be willing to say, I don't wanna make that commitment instead of, I can't do it or it's not possible. So yeah, wow, I wrote in all caps. Anyway, I digress. And wow, I really do digress. Next month, I will report back to you with some papers. I'll probably focus on syntax and semantics. Uh, maybe look up some phonological studies, we'll see. Uh, but those are the, you know, the, the, the overview topics, in my opinion, are phonology and syntax and then semantics. But that's simply because the main courses at my school are structured that way. There, there's more. Don't want to give myself too much choice, though. And maybe I can incorporate those for my class, but maybe I can tie those into learning Japanese and, you know, how they might help quote unquote speed things up. And this isn't about speeding things up. It's about learning things at a more at a deeper level. And when you do learn things at a deeper level, you have to review them less and so on and so forth. Uh, I hope to be on level six of Wani Kani. Right now, I actually haven't passed any kanji on level three. That's because I fell behind a little bit, but I have gotten the like subscription or whatever. So we're good. And then the pronunciation of kanji and vocab, I easily mix up, but it's a work in progress. And you know, some, some specific words have kept me behind and all that. Uh, and then, you know, I'll keep moving on with Boom Pro. I think I'm just tired, but I've also spoken a lot today. In a month, I want to be done with the N5 grammar, or at least comfortable with it all. So, uh, I, by November, I guess. You know, I don't know if I'll be comfortable with it all by the next learning log, which will be on October, and I'll give the date in a moment. But according to Boon Pro, JLPT progress for N5 is 20 out of 118 grammar concepts, and the the kanjis, all the meanings are down. I just have to get the pronunciations. And they're coming up in Wani Kani now, so that's pretty good. Uh, anyway, the manga, I have decided after a comment from last time that, you know, Shonen Jump would be a really good source. Finally crack open this manga and, you know, when I might sit down and casually read um, a book, I crack open the manga. Now there is Furigana for all of this, but I don't know many of these kanji. Anyway, yeah, so just, Again, just practicing reading and all that fun stuff. If I'm not gonna watch TV, I gotta, you know, do something. <laughs> it's just hard if I can't, you know, if I have to keep looking at the meaning. I'll probably maybe go through this like four times. <laughs> It'll be a while before I can read this, uh, you know, the sixth grade level or whatever it's meant for, but it's important that I do it anyway. I can really never keep these short, uh, although it, this is 
currently 21 minutes, 20 seconds. We are only one recording in. So go recap and please leave your comments down below. If you're curious, if you're learning a language right now and you're curious about doing something new, I don't really consider myself a linguist, but I really enjoy linguistics. So if you're curious about that perspective, try looking up some papers, some key, you know, if you're interested in, in, in the structure of a language, uh, generative grammar and syntax would be some keywords to look up. If you're curious about the meaning of language, uh, semantics and pragmatics, uh, the sound of language, phonology and phonetics, uh, and sound inventories. There are a lot of studies on, you know, just like two sounds compared to each other. So I would definitely recommend that. And, and you know, if you do that, let me know in the comments below. If you're doing something that's really working for you, I'd love to hear it because as with everything, I'm iterating on this Japanese learning process. So go recap for next month. A few papers on Japanese syntax and semantics will be shared and potentially even reviewed. Wani Kani, level six plus. This is technically out of my control, but I want to simply get as far as I can and level six in four weeks might be doable. Boon Pro Streak consistent, so I will not have missed a day. And manga being read, manga, manga being read and mindfully uh, read through. So this is Haikyuu. I've seen the show, love the show, so I understand what's happening. So that's it. As always, let me know what you're learning and working on the comments below or on our Discord. It's been popping off lately, so I'm looking forward to seeing it grow. Uh, Child Language Lab, the lab I'm working at, is always looking for more participants. I'll leave a pinned comment below. Uh, if you know anyone from two to nine, we'd love to have you. If you're in the city, even better. We have some in-person studies. And lastly, thanks for watching. The next learning log will be barring any emergencies or disasters, of course, October 9th. So. I hope to see you then. I should start speaking some Japanese in these, for real. Maybe by the end of the year, I'll try recording some gaming videos in Japanese. I'm definitely not there yet, but it would it would stay very basic. So, the timer's gone orange. Thank you so much for watching yet again. Have a good one, and as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next month.